So yeah, we're starting our new unit on biographies. And our objective today is readers notice and understand the characteristics of biography as a genre. So we're just gonna be looking today at two different biographies of some pretty well-known people that you guys probably will know. And we're going to just look at what we always notice and what we often notice as we go through. But before we get to that part, Let's ask the question, and we'll ask this question again tomorrow as well, but just kind of what are biographies? What, what do you think of the biography is? Zoe. Yeah, so that, that's a pretty good definition. Anyone else want to add to that thought? Marcos? It's a biography. No, we're asking what are biographies. And can you take your mask down so I can see your eyes? But it's not on my face. But it needs to be able to see your eyes too, okay? All right, so yeah, I think Zoe gave us a pretty good idea of what a biography is. So in the next few slides, we're going to look at some covers of some biographies. As we do that, think about what ways all these books are alike. Ask yourself if the things you notice are always or often occur in biographies and we'll make a key chart together. So here's the first one. So think about what you noticed so far, just on the cover of this biography. What do you notice? Emmett? Title and picture. Yep, we have a picture, we have a title. What else do we notice, Amelia? I noticed that um, on the bottom it says, the inspirational life story is what will be the man behind it again. Sort of a little caption like that. Okay. Uh, it sort of tells you what's going to be in the book. Yup. Practice. So we got a picture to show us who Walt Disney is. We can put a face to the name. Yup. Marcos, what do you notice? A guy with a suspicious mustache. Um, and okay. it's obviously Morgan. Okay. So, yeah, it's a pretty famous person. I'm sure many of you have either heard of or been to Disneyland, the theme park, and I'm sure many of you have either read books or watched movies that had something to do with Disney. So um, this is obviously a very famous person that many of us know about. Okay, what else do we notice about this person? Think about what you notice here. Zoe? Okay. So Greenwood Biographies, this is uh, the company or whatever that made it. Um, Brecken? Sophisticated, all right. So a very complex and sophisticated person. So this is a picture of the person on the cover. What else do we notice, Amelia? I noticed that, like I said the last time, it had sort of a little caption that says Albert Einstein. It could be about anything. It could be about like what he discovered, but this says a biography, so it tells you something about his life. Yeah, so we can see that this is a biography about a person named Albert Einstein. So it's gonna be about his life. Marcos. It's the German man who looks like he's going to explore for the country, and that's how he got the experience. Okay, can we, can we focus on what we're supposed to be focusing oh. on, all right? Not just comedy. He was point. a mass All right. No, he's not a magician. So let's go ahead and read through a little bit of text for you biographies, because if we're going to talk about what we notice or always notice or often notice, we also need to look at the text of biographies, not just the covers. So I'm going to read through this, and you're just going to listen. So Walter Elias, or Walt Disney, co-founded Walt Disney Productions with his brother Roy, which became one of the best-known motion picture production companies in the world. Disney was an innovative animator and created the cartoon character Mickey Mouse. He won 22 Academy Awards during his lifetime and was the founder of theme parks Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Wait, Walt, Walt Disney's parents and siblings. Disney's father was Elias Disney, an Irish Canadian. His mother, Laura Hall Disney, was German American. Disney was one of five children, four boys and a girl. Walt Disney's childhood. 
Disney was born on December 5th, 1901 in the Hermosa section of Chicago, Illinois. He lived most of his childhood in Marsley, Missouri, where he began drawing, painting, and selling pictures to neighbors and family friends. In 1911, his family moved to Kansas City, where Disney developed a love for trains. His uncle, Mike Martin, was a train engineer who worked the route between Fort Madison, Iowa, and Marceline. Later, Disney would work a summer job with the railroad, selling snacks and newspapers to travelers. So that's just a little bit about Walt Disney. And here's a little bit about Albert Einstein's biography. I promise you four papers, the young patent examiner wrote his friend. The letter would turn out to bear some of the most significant tidings in the history of science, but its momentous nature was masked by an impish tone that was typical of its author. He had, after all, just addressed his friend as the Persian whale and apologized for writing a letter that was inconsequential babble. Only when he got around to describing the papers, which he had produced during his spare time, did he give some indication that he sensed their significance. So that's a little bit from Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. So, always and often, what do we seem to always see? And it doesn't have to be exactly like word for word quotes and stuff like that, but what do you think from biographies? What are we always gonna get from a biography? And what are we often seeing from biographies? Emma? Pictures on the front of the person that they're gonna be talking about. Okay, so pictures of the person, do you think that's an always or often? Always. Okay, so. pictures of the person so you can you can answer for always or often whatever you want Kylie yeah there could be do you think that's an always or an often um, I would put it in the often yeah so a table of contents it is a nonfiction book and most of the time from what we talked about with nonfiction books we know nonfiction books typically have text features and table of contents is one of those features, right? And so I would say a lot of times there is gonna be a table of contents in a biography. What else are we gonna always or often see in biographies, Marcos? We're always gonna see, we're always going to see, or we're always, in the text, we're always gonna hear about Yeah. That made them famous, like for example, Walt Disney Disney World. Yeah. So we're always gonna hear about the accomplishments of the person. So whatever it is, like Marco said, that made the person famous, we're gonna hear about it. So I mean that's pretty much going to be a thing a requirement, right, for a lot of biographies. Uh Brecken. Okay, you're going to often see quotes, whether in the front of the cover or maybe in, in the book itself. We're going to see quotes from the person themselves or maybe like a parent or some other person that's connected to that person's life. Anything else we want to add to this, Amelia? They often have captures for like pictures, for like text features. Yeah, sure. So they're often going to have text features, like nonfiction books usually they do. they are nonfiction books. Yeah, exactly, because they are part of that collection of nonfiction books. But remember, nonfiction books have a lot of variety. Your social studies textbook is a nonfiction book. So you have a lot of variety of nonfiction books, and biographies are part of that group, that family of nonfiction books. So yeah, text features seems like a very logical thing that you'll often see in a biography. What else? Marcos? Um, most of the time you're told, told about the facts. Okay, so, 
you think that goes in often or always? Always. Yeah, probably always, because most of the time biography is past, right? It is not present in the moment. So, um, talking about past. Yeah, they might have a present part in the book. Like, for example, some of the uh, biographies in the classroom library have some sports stars in there that are still alive. Derek Jeter is still alive. Um, I think there was one about Tom Brady in there. He's still alive and actually still plays football. So, of course, those, those biographies are not, they're talking about the past, but they might have a little section about the present, like where, where they're at right now. There's some biographies of some presidents that are still alive, like uh, Obama, I think, has a biography. So, and he's still alive. Well, so it is about past, but um, they, they may have a little section about the present, right, because they're still living. All right, um, any other always or oftens that we see? Zoe? I have two. Okay. if it is or not like so it could be an autobiography if they strictly used what was written in the diary yeah. but if somebody starts commenting on the diary or adding an extra to the diary then it's not necessarily an auto it's a biography yeah. because some other person is including other details so it, it that's a that's a good question i would have to look that one up to see um, or you can look it up on your own time to find out if it's an autobiography or a biography. But yeah, that is something to highlight on, and we don't really talk about that in this particular unit of biographies, but that is true. Autobiographies are self-written biographies, so you could technically write a story about yourself, and that would be an autobiography. Um, and I would say that your, your personal writings that you guys did at the beginning of the year, in some ways, you could make that an argument that that's an autobiography. If you used facts and you wrote about a story about yourself, you could argue that is technically an autobiography, right? Okay, so moving on. Brecken? Does that mean that that means that you can't write about yourself? Can you say that? It's realistic. Okay, it's realistic. well, in the official sense, no, because it's obviously not a real person. So in, in officially, no, it is not an autobiography. But if you want to pretend and go into the world of Diary of Wimpy Kid and pretend that he is a real person, then yes, you could technically argue that it is an autobiography because he's writing about his own life, right? So it is an autobiography in that way, but it's a fictional autobiography because it's a fake person, right? It's a character that's making up their own story or talking about their own story that's also made up, right? So. Yes, you're kind of right in an interesting way. Yeah, uh, you could say it's an autobiography. All right, anything about this? No. I guess not. <laughs> All right, Marcos, what do you have to say? I'm going to move on to the next thing. In kind, of, in kind of the same way, like Brecken was saying, that there is a book that is realistic fiction because it's based on things that happen to a girl during Yeah, if, uh, just like the Diary of Wimpy Kids scenario, if it's a fake character, but they're writing an autobiography form because they're writing about their you know, fictional life, then yes, and that would be an autobiography. But it's realistic, yeah, realistic fiction. So the writer is writing in a unique way. That's basically what it is. The writer's like, I want to write a fictional story, but I don't want to write it like the normal fictional story. I want to write it like this character is writing an autobiography. So, you know, that writers write in unique ways sometimes. And it's to, in order to get readers to be interested about their book, right? Okay, we have to move on though. 
So today, choose a biography from the library, unless you are already reading one. And as you read, look at the chart uh, or think about the things that we talked about and see which things you can find in the biography you are reading. So if you need a biography, they're all over there. They're labeled biography. And you can flip through and just kind of see, do the things that we talked about in the always and in the often, do you see those things in the book that you're flipping to? Okay? So that's all you have to do for this. Um, you don't have to actually write anything. You just gotta look at it and compare, okay? So that will be part of your task today. All right, so I'm gonna stop right there. You can go ahead and get your reading material and we'll go ahead and start.